Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. England, Sweden, big quarterfinal showdown. Can England bring football home? Will Sweden provide another defensive masterclass? And how is England going to score goals? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're going to preview England against Sweden. So England, Sweden, this could be England's best chance of making it to the World Cup final. First, they have to get past Sweden and then a date with Russia or Croatia would await. However, when you look at the past, when you look at what's ahead of them, if England don't do it now, when will they ever get it done? However, Sweden is no pushover. We look at what they've done heading into the tournament, ensuring that the Netherlands and Italy don't make it to the World Cup. They won their group with Germany and Mexico in it and are now here and they won't be scared they'll be up for the task and when we break it down there are really no surprises in the way that either side is going to line up we know england 352 harry kane up front raheem sterling will he start you think that he's going to get another go in midfield you have henderson lingard ali as wingbacks trippier and ashley young as for sweden you're going to get a 442 you're going to get toivonen and berg up front Klassen and forsberg on the flanks and in midfield you should get ecto and the returning sub larsen Svensson did a great job against Switzerland, but we expect Larson to get back into this side. And how we break it down, the first thing that we have to discuss is how are England going to score goals? I know Harry Kane is the leading goal scorer at the World Cup, but look at the goals that he scored. Set pieces, penalty shots, and a fortuitous bounce that hit off him against Panama. England haven't shown us who they really are. We don't know how they score goals. They were shut down and neutralized against Colombia. And that could happen here again. Because when you look at it, Sweden bricks drop into a 4-4-2. They defend with all 10 players behind the ball. What they're going to do probably here is have Toivonen and Berg sit on Henderson. If one of the full, one of the center backs step forward, one player will step and one will stay on Henderson, but they're going to look to ensure that Henderson doesn't get on the ball. Then you have to look at the midfield. Ektel, Larson probably stepping to Ali and Lingard. You have to assume that they're going to track their runs and hope that they can replicate what Colombia did so well. And then it's just down to the wingbacks because the wingbacks are going to push forward and when you really break it down this is where they could possibly get at Sweden however Grankvis and Lindelof have been superb with defending aerial balls coming into the box but when you really break it down the sad thing for England is that Kieran Trippier has been their most creative player in terms of delivering crosses from the right hand side how is England going to create chances we look at it we, we've seen Lingard we've seen Ali like to break into those spaces like to pull defenders into the channels make runs into the channels and then they have Kane and Sterling as decoys dropping off the ball ensuring that they pull defenders out of position we've seen sometimes where Ali's pushed out into the wide area and you have Sterling breaking into that space Space, but we haven't really seen Harry Kane get legitimate goal scoring opportunities behind the fence and this here won't be any different but that's the DNA of this England side so far getting runners in behind and there is one ploy that they could try to get going is if they could get Trippier forward and they could get Ali making those late runs in behind like we've seen them do for Spurs that could be a ploy for England to get goals but when you really look at it they can't really change anything with the system because I mean they could pull Ali a bit higher and have him play with Kane but then who goes into midfield Loftus Cheek has and looked good dire then pushing henderson doesn't really change much england lack controller in midfield someone who could get on the ball string passes together just ensure that they retain it and then find those little passes in behind the defense in between the lines they don't have that and that's the biggest problem that this england side has and then you have to question how are they going to score because if trippy is not delivering crosses if they can get young forward that could be a big plus for them. But as we've seen so far, Kane's not getting the service that he needs. He's dropping off with Sterling. We've seen some good combinations with them. If they could get Raheem Sterling to be more effective in the final third with his final pass, with his decision making, that doesn't happen overnight. But if they could get that for one game, then that's a ploy that they could use to get past the Swedish defense. But besides that, apart from set pieces, apart from the possible penalty shot we don't know how england get goals and that is big especially if you're going to win a knockout tournament when we get to sweden 
The way that they attack is totally different. They like to play direct. They can play long balls into Berg. Berg hasn't been, Berg and Toivonen haven't really been great in front of that, specifically Berg. But the way they play long balls into him is so pivotal because he can hold up the ball well. And what they do is they get class in, they get Forsberg, and they get Toivonen around him. And then that's when they really work. And they could play those quick, intricate passes, try to break him behind. That is how Sweden get their business done. They're going to obviously try to get Augustinsson forward down the left. If they could get him forward with Forsberg cutting in, that's another avenue that they could go with in terms of getting crosses into the box. But England drop off into a 3 5 2. They. They're pretty organized in that sense. They have numbers in the box. So if you could get two strikers in there to give them a few problems, they haven't looked convincing when, they're, when they've had to defend in these areas. So Sweden will look to get crosses into the box, try to fluster that back line, and that is key to their success. And then the, the key player for them is Forsberg. He was tremendous in that game against Switzerland where he could just cut in from the left and find those little passes in those pockets of spaces between the lines. And then he could also provide a goal threat and he's a direct threat running at defenders so they're going to try and ensure that he doesn't get on the ball in transition so that's one way to really stop them and the last point here is like i said who is going to be the difference maker for england do they go with Rashford? Can they get Kane going? How do you get Kane going? Do you play balls into him and have him link off the link off Lingard running in, link off uh, Ali running in, link off link uh, link off Sterling running in? There's so many questions to ask, but we know what it's going to be like. There, Sweden are going to sit in two deep banks of four. They're going to stay narrow. They're going to try and limit the supply line into the strikers, which could see Sterling and and Kane drop a bit deeper and they're going to allow and try and clog the space and stay narrow so that Lingard can get forward and it's going to possibly be down to mistakes and trying to get the England wingbacks forward so that they can get, deliver cross into the box or possibly and provide enough width so that they can make bombing runs into those channels but like we've said it's down for Southgate to find and find a solution and prove to us that this England team is the real deal because we haven't seen enough substance yet to justify that. And as for Sweden, we know what they're going to be like and can they produce another defensive masterclass in the sense that they sit deep, they sit narrow, they have a ploy in terms of getting Berg, getting runners around Berg, playing intricate passes in behind the defense and creating chances from wide areas. But that is how this game is going to boil down. But let me know how, what you guys think. Do you think England will win? Do you think Sweden could provide another shock upset? And how will England score goals? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews. Thank you.